Hi, today I'm gonna to read for you guys the ant and the elephant, okay? There's the elephant's trunk, and there's the ant, okay? This book is by Bill Pete, who's really, really excellent. He's got tons of great books. Uh, check out Hubert's Hair-Raising Adventure. That one is so great, okay? Uh, so this one, what I want you to do is to listen to this book. Read with me, if you have it, uh, and then think, think, what is Bill Pete, what is he trying to tell us, okay? What kind of person should we be, okay? One morning, a tiny ant crawled up a tall blade of jungle grass for a view of the river. So it crawled up right there. Whoa. All at once, he was caught by a breeze that sent him sailing off into the swirling water. Just when it seemed he would be swept downstream and gone forever, the ant grabbed onto a snag and scrambled to safety. Okay, so there's the snag, the snag in the river. So he's safe, he's safe. But <laughs> there the ant remained, stranded, wondering what he would do when he spied a mud turtle creeping along the riverbank. Oh, Mr. Hardshell, called the ant in his wee small voice. Would you be so kind as to give me a lift back to dry land. It's a nice day for a swim. Help me. <laughs> the old turtle turned his head slowly. After a long look at the ant, he said, I've had my swim for today. And besides, if I went racing about, helping everyone who is in trouble, I'd have no time left to relax. Then the turtle tottered on his way to find a place where he could sun himself. Not helping, not helping. <gasps> when the turtle came to a flat, warm rock, he crept slowly up the edge. Suddenly, he went toppling backward and landed upside down. Blast it all! Dad, blame it! And he began thrashing out with his legs, desperately trying to right himself. Help me, help me! But all the kicking could do was to send him rocking about on his shell. That was all. And he does not look happy. Oh, Dad, blame it! As he stretched his stringy neck, looking about for help, the turtle spied a hornbill roosting on her nest high on a tree limb. Oh, Mr. Bi oh, sorry, Mrs. Big Bill, he called. Would you mind helping me back to my feet? With one flip of your beak, I'm sure you could do it. I could, snapped the bird, but I won't. This will teach you not to be so clumsy. As she leaned down to say more, the hornbill tipped the nest and her one big egg rolled out to go tumbling all the way to the ground. Oh, did it break? Luckily, it landed in a clump of a fluff tough weeds without so much as a crack. But problem. Thank goodness she cried. Oh, I forgot my voice. Thank goodness, she cried when she found the egg all in one piece. Then, seizing it in her beak, she fluttered her wings as she tried to take off. But she fluttered. Her oversized beak plus the cumbersome egg were too much of a load. Still, she kept on furiously thrashing the air until her wings were worn into a frazzle. She needs help. Who can help put the egg back in the nest? As the miserable bird sat there, staring helplessly at the egg, a giraffe came striding along. <laughs> I don't know if giraffes do this. Oh, Mr. Great Neck, she called. You've come just at the right time. If I perched on your head with the egg in my beak, you could carry us back to my nest. Indeed, no, 
scoffed the proud giraffe. If I did such a thing, how silly I would look. I'll have no one laughing at me. No, indeed. And Mr. Great Neck went on his way with his head held high, nibbling at the treetops. He's going to have a problem. Okay. He was so intent upon the tasty leaves, he didn't notice the tangled dangle vine until it was twisted up around one leg. Here now, snorted the giraffe with an angry kick. How dare you? The kick merely gave the vine an extra twist, which tightened. Okay. Which tightened its grip. Then, in fury, the giraffe began kicking, kicking wildly about with all four legs. The more he kicked, the more entangled he became. Finally, his legs were so tightly tied up in the vine, he couldn't budge. He couldn't move at all. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Will the lion help the giraffe? I don't know. As he stood there in the tangle, he spied a lion heading his way. What good luck, thought the giraffe. With those great claws of his, he could rip this vine to shreds in one swipe. Oh, Mr. Big Paw, he called to the lion. Just look at me. The lion took one look, then burst into a great roaring laugh. Ho, 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 that is funny. All the animals sound the same. Ho, 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 I see what you mean. Ho, ho, ho. And laughing merrily, he went on his way through the jungle. This jungle is a terrible place. No one helps anybody. The lion was still laughing to himself as he flopped down in a patch of shade, for a bit of a catnap, a sleep, a snooze. He flopped down with such a whump, it upset a huge boulder, which was all set to topple. To the lion's surprise, it rolled over and came right down upon his tail. <laughs> with a furious roar, he leaped to eat, tugging frantically to free himself but he soon found it was useless to struggle. He could never get loose unless he was willing to part with his tail. The only way this is gonna help if he loses his tail. Or... <laughs> As he sat there growling over his bad luck, a rhino came along. Oh, Mr. Hornyhead, he called. Would you mind bumping this stupid boulder off my tail? One nudge of your great snout would do it. So his great snout, his nose, okay? Will he help? I don't know. I would, said the rhino, if you could think of some way to return the favor. Oh, right now, sighed the lion, all I can think of is my poor tail. Too bad, said the rhino, and he went lumbering off through the trees. Somebody help somebody, please. Dun, dun, dun. The rhino never bothered to watch where he was going. With a great horn out front, he went plowing straight ahead through the brambles and brush. When all of a sudden, zump! He blundered head on with a stump. The stump. With his great horn stuck deep into it. Lots of accidents in this forest. Out of my way, you stupid stump, he snorted. And with a furious lunge, he tried to knock over the stump. This drove the horn still deeper. Then with a mighty tug, he tried pulling himself free. But the stump refused to let go. At last, the rhino realized he was hopelessly stuck. So the, rhin the rhino, the lion, the giraffe, the hornbill, the turtle, and the ant were left in deep trouble. 
That would have been that if a jolly big somebody hadn't decided to take a stroll through the jungle that day. Who's the big somebody who's going to take a stroll, a, a nice walk through the, through the jungle? Is it going to be you? Are you going to help all these people? I think it's going to be a whale. It was a huge elephant. Dun, da, da, da. It was a huge elephant with such great spreading ears. He couldn't, he could hear the slightest sound, the faint rustle of a leaf, the least snap of a twig, or even the tiny voice of an ant calling. He used his long trunk out over the river, inviting the ant to climb aboard, then carried him safely back to dry land. How can I ever thank you enough? cried the grateful ant. It was no big thing, said the elephant. But it was a big thing for me, said the ant. It was everything. And he scurried away through the, through the grass. Uh, if you've got a uh, turtle, turtle, if you've got time to bother with a nothing of an ant, grumbled the old turtle, how about me? You are in a pickle, <laughs> in a difficult situation. You are in a pickle, said the elephant, and with the tip of his trunk, he flipped the turtle back onto his feet. Still not the nicest turtle, though. Then, without a word of thanks, the old codger went tottering away down the bank to disappear in the river. Some people, not nice. If you can help an ugly old turtle, squawked the hornbill, the least you can do is put my lovely egg back in the nest. The very least I can do, agreed the elephant, and holding the egg gently in his trunk, he carried it up to the nest. It's a wonder you didn't crack it, snapped the bird as she settled down onto the egg. Not grateful, not thankful, not in the least. Giraffe's turn, okay? Say now, chuckled, chuck, oh, the elephant. Say now, chuckled the elephant when he came upon the giraffe. That's what I call a funny fix. He's fixed, he's stuck there, okay? Not funny to me, snorted the giraffe. Not one bit funny. Then I'll try not to laugh, said the big fellow, searching through the vine with his trunk to get at the worst of the tangle. See how the vine is tangled up? Oh, oh, oh. Dun, dun, dun. Off. It took a few minutes to undo the dozens of knots that gripped the long legs. Once they were loose, the vine fell limply to the ground. Well, I must say, it's about time, snorted the snooty giraffe as he went gallopity clopping away. Very, not very good. What have we here, asked the elephant when he came to the lion. We have a big, stupid, bumbling boulder, growled the lion. That's what... Then be off, stupid boulder. And the huge tusker heaved the boulder into the air with his trunk and sent it, sent it tumbling. So here they call the elephant the tusker because he's got tusks, okay? the old tusker. Once he was free, the lion gave his tail a few switches to make sure it was working. What a relief, sighed the lion. Someday, when I'm in a better mood, I must remember to thank you. Someday, not today. No hurry, said the elephant. He continued on his way through the jungle, where he soon found the hopelessly stuck... What, what was after the lion? The rhino. The rhino, okay? I can pull you free, said the elephant, if your tail can stand one mighty tug. Right now it's my snout I'm worried about, groaned the rhino, so jerk away! Gripping the rhino's tail tightly in his trunk, the elephant reared back 
and with one almighty jerk, the rhino went sailing free of the stump to land with one big blump. That was one whale of a jerk, muttered the rhino. I hope you got some fun out of it. It was a pleasure, smiled the as he went merrily on his way. Oh, let's look. He was enormously pleased with himself after all the good deeds he had done that day. Everyone has his troubles, he chuckled. Everyone but big me. I'll never get into a fix where I need help. That's one thing for sure. The elephant didn't suspect there was a deep ravine just ahead. It was too well hidden by a scatter flat fern by scatterflat ferns. There's the ravine, okay? Big hole in the ground. Elephants falling is not a good thing, okay? Ah! <laughs> oh no, elephant. Before he knew it, he had tumbled straight into it, landing with a seven ton thud that shook the whole jungle. He was wedged so deep in such a position that his chunk and his legs were useless. Ooh. It served me right, he muttered, for feeling so almighty big. Okay. So, so almighty big and powerful. Now I'm the one who needs help. Help! He bellowed. Help, help, help! Then he waited anxiously for a reply. He waited for hours. He must be getting thirsty and hungry and scared. Staring up at the sky until it faded into evening and a deep stillness settled over the jungle. Is it going to be there all night? Is the rhino going to help? The rhino would be so big and strong. Who's going to help him? He's looking at something. Hmm. It was so quiet, his great spreading ears caught the sound of footsteps. Tiny, tiny footsteps from somewhere above. On this leaf. Who's there? asked the elephant. It's me, said a wee small voice. The ant you rescued this morning and all my ant friends. Ninety-five thousand of them. It's a big number. I know ants are amazingly strong, said the elephant, but surely you don't expect to lift me out of here. We can try, said the ant. Come on, my friends, let's get to work. 95,000 ants is a big number. Suddenly, down the steep wall of the ravine came a teeming horde of ants swarming under the elephant. I think this would feel fun, <laughs> like a magic carpet. Then all together they began chanting, Heave ho, heave ho, up you go, up you go. Heave ho, heave ho, up you go, up you go. And to the elephant's amazement, he felt himself moving upward, slowly but surely, just an inch at a time. The tireless ants hoisted their huge burden up the wall. Heave ho, up you go, heave ho, up you go. Don't lose your grip, don't anyone trip. And at last, under a bright full moon, they set the elephant down in the scatter flat ferns. That was tremendous, cried the elephant. I can't believe it. It was nothing, replied the 95,000 ants. Nothing for you, said the elephant, but a mighty big thing for me. Now, if you'll climb aboard, I'll give you a ride back to your anthill. Okay? Now, the ant said the same thing, okay? The same thing to, to the elephant a long time ago. Mighty big thing for me. I'm not a bit tired, said one ant, but I would like a ride. I've never ridden on an elephant. Neither have I, cried all the others. Um, I haven't either, they're saying, like this. And they swarmed up the elephant's legs onto his back. Then away they went, harumpity, bumpity, clumpity, hump. The mighty big and the mighty small off through the jungle together. Okay? 
So, what are we supposed to learn from this? Bill Pete. Bill Pete. I think he wants us to learn that um, maybe helping, helping other people, it might be a very small thing for us. And it might bother us a little bit, but it might be a huge thing for somebody else. Okay? So if you see someone who needs help, you know, it, it, do it. Do it. Open the door for the people. Carry the bag for the people. Um, this is the type of people that uh, uh, make the jungle, our world, better. Okay? Take care. Enjoy this book. Look at all of Bill Pete's books. Bye-bye.